Hey makeup friends, I have been in a bit of a rut and I have not bought much makeup at all in the last few months. I just haven't found anything to be particularly exciting or where it has been exciting. When I really sit and look at it, I realize that I'm just not going to get as much use out of it as I tell myself I'm going to. And so, of course, leave it to me to finally be swayed to buy a five pan neutral palette. <laughs> Let's get into this. As always, I want to start off by welcoming you back to the channel, or if you're new here, then hello and welcome. My name is Kara, and today we are taking a look at the mini bronze palette from Natasha Denona. Now, in looking at the Sephora website, it says that the shades in this one are inspired by the midi-sized palette, the bronze palette. I don't have that one, so I can't do any sort of direct comparisons. There is always a chance that one or more of these shades is replicated from the full-size palette. So if you have the full size palette, I highly recommend double checking the shade names over there to make sure if you buy this mini that you're not just buying the same palette in a smaller format. Having said that, the price on this palette is $27 US or $34 Canadian, and you're getting five shades in there. One thing I do like about these little palettes is just that the packaging is quite secure and very minimal. There's not a lot of fuss involved here. They store really easily. They're nice and flat, nice and thin, and away you go. I love that in a palette. And while it is clearly a plastic component, it doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't feel flimsy. It does close with a nice, satisfying snap, and I've never had any of these shadows like pop out of the, the pan or anything of that sort. Now, I don't really want to belabor the point all that much because I did film the application of this look and I give my thoughts on these shades much more coherently in that than I would if I'm just rambling on about it and holding it up for you. So let's just get straight into the review. We'll start with some swatches and move on to the eye look. So here we go. First is the shade Russet, a matte warm dark brown, followed by Flesh, a matte beige nude. Then we have Gobi, which is described as a matte medium tangerine brown. Then Bronze Foil, a metallic coppery bronze. And lastly, Tough, a matte medium terracotta. We are up close and personal, but as I'm looking in the mirror, I'm seeing that I have like this weird bump here and when I touch it, it becomes itchy. I don't know. Maybe I got a mosquito bite. Nevertheless, we're going to power through. I did go ahead and prime my eyes. I used the primer from Fenty and then I set it with a cream colored shadow from my Tartlet in Bloom palette. So we are ready to go with the mini bronze. I am planning on using all five shades in here. I just haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to apply them, but I am going to start with this lightest shade here, which is called Flesh. Not entirely keen on that word, but uh, here we go. Also, I find it weird that like this is the standard color for flesh when I mean, there's a lot of different flesh colors out there, so eh, not wild on the naming of that one. Regardless, I'm gonna go in with a large fluffy brush. The vast majority of my brushes are waiting to be washed right now, so I don't have like my top tier brushes available for today, but having said that, I did do a declutter a while ago now, like a few, maybe a lot of months ago. Time has lost all meaning, I have no idea. But I did do a big declutter of my brushes, so even when they're not like my favorite brushes that are available to be used, I still really like all of them. So there's that. All right, so this one, although it is the lightest in the palette, I would not say that it is particularly light. It is showing up on my skin tone a lot of times the lightest shade in a palette, if it's not like a stark white, but it is more of this like bone kind of color, it just kind of fades into my skin tone, but here we have it showing up quite nicely. 
not experiencing any issues in blending it. It's not particularly soft and powdery. It's not just floofing off all over the place. So this is what I expect from a Natasha Denona matte, is this blendability. They don't always work out that way, so I am happy to see it, at least on this shade so far, bodes well for the rest of the palette, but we shall find out in due course. Next up, I'm gonna go in with this middle shade here, which is called Gobi, and apply that a little bit lower down in the crease just to see if I can build up a bit of a gradient there. And because this one here turned out so much oranger on my skin, I don't really know what to expect with this one because I actually had to double check because as I was blending this one, it looked like I was blending this one. I wasn't but it looked like it, just the way that it actually translates onto my skin. So let's see if this one has any surprises in store as well. It looks very, very similar to the one beside it. I don't, did I fuck it up? Did I? I don't, I might have. Let's see. I'm gonna pick up some of that lightest shade here on this brush. I'm just gonna apply it on the back of my hand. No, I did not mess that up. That is the color it's showing up. But then if I use like a little color switchy thing and go into that one in the middle, Gobi. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Well, we can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Just give me a second. Uh, let's see here. So that's Gobi, and that one is Flesh. They're very similar. Like, a lot, a lot more similar than they look in the pan. Interesting. All right, well, we will power through, now that I've assured myself that I haven't messed up on the first shadow. Let's power through and see where that gets us. Not so much with the gradient yet, but we do have two deeper shades still to come. I mean, I guess there's like a bit of a difference, but it's pretty subtle. A lot more subtle than the pans would suggest at any rate. But regardless, even with all this blending, I'm not seeing any patchiness develop. No areas are refusing to blend out. I'm happy with the blendability, although the shade differential doesn't really make me happy. All right, now I'm gonna go in with this shade on the end, which is called Tough, and just apply it wherever my brush takes me, to be honest. I still, at this point, have not fully decided whether I'm going to do like a halo eye or like my standard look. I don't know, it's gonna depend on uh, where we get to with blending right now. This one's definitely a bit more on like the rusty kind of side than the other two. So I'm pleased to see that there is a noticeable difference with this one. Although in terms of overall like darkness or depth, I guess, it's not exactly a deep shade. There's still one that's deeper, but when you only have five, I do like when there's a little bit more of a noticeable contrast between the shades that everything's sort of adding something and it's not just variations on a theme, if that makes sense. Oh, stuff it. You know what? We're going to go with my typical application style. Sorry if it gets like super boring. It's just this is the way that I typically do my makeup. This is what I think looks flattering on my eye shape. And when I'm testing out eyeshadows, I want to know how it's going to work on a day-to-day -day basis. And I also 
Like if I run into problems while I'm doing a super intricate cut crease, that's probably on me, not on the eyeshadow, because I don't do super intricate cut creases. So when I'm just doing like a palette review, it doesn't make an awful lot of sense in my mind for me to get like super creative with the placement, just because it's not really an accurate representation of how I would use the palette. So take from that what you will. But again, this one is blending nicely. I do think it is helping to establish a bit of a gradient now because it is deeper than those first two, but not wildly so. That's okay, we'll see. We've got another deep shade here to play with. I really do like the color of this one. I love those like burnty, burnty, burnt orange kind of shades. Honestly, it reminds me of fall, which I have to say, I think this is the first summer that I've actually enjoyed summer. Like I'm enjoying the heat, which is weird because it's like hot as balls today, but I'm also in my air conditioned house. So there's that. But normally I cannot wait for fall to get here. And this summer I'm enjoying the process of sweating my ass off. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Blends really nicely. I'm going to go in with a clean brush if I can find there we go. And just blend those edges out a bit. Gosh, now that I've had my hair like lightened so much, and I mean the sun's not helping, but it's more like pink than brown, my eyebrows look like startlingly dark. And I am debating picking up some sort of new eyebrow product in a shade that is significantly lighter than I'm used to, but at the same time, I don't care all that much. <laughs> it's honestly, I mean, is somebody going to make fun of me for my eyebrow? Well, it is the internet. You never know. Regardless, it is what it is, but they look very dark. <laughs> okay. It is time to put the deepest shade to the test. This is called Russet, and I'm going to go in with somewhat of a fluffy ish pencil-y type brush just for like super precise placement. It is from Valer. It's the DL03. And let's see what this shade can do. Okay, well it does bring some depth and some darkness. Adds a little bit of drama. Probably go in and build that up even more, but for now I just want to get the placement down. Ooh, I like that shade. I am not above like a really black smoky eye, but I just like browns so much more. I still like, I feel like you can still get the drama, but they're not as harsh. And I find that they wear easier as well. The black I always find like gets faded and spotty. I have to use like a black base under it. And even then it's not always guaranteed. I just find brown to be a bit more user friendly. I will say, I looked at the pictures on Sephora of the sample looks, I guess, and there's one that is just so beautiful. But it's either photoshopped or she used black because I don't think I can make this shadow look anywhere near as deep as what it does on the model. And it's such a beautiful look, but I don't, at least, um, I don't think I can achieve it with just these shadows. I know I can't achieve it with just these shadows. So there's something else added to it. And I don't like when brands do that because it's just misleading and it's unnecessarily misleading. Minor gripe, but I just, the point stands. I don't like when brands get misleading with their pictures, shall we say. That also goes down to like swatch images that are clearly photoshopped. Or also, who's the other big offender? Pat McGrath with like that dazzle overlay. I get it, it's a sparkly shadow, but I wanna see the actual sparkle. I don't wanna see an overlay. <laughs> just, just show me what your products can do. All right, I'm gonna go back with that first brush and pick up that lightest shade 
put that in ear bunnies uh, and just use that to help again blend out and diffuse those edges I gotta say I think if you have blue eyes this palette is going to make them stand out so nicely Like, I don't think it's doing any like harm to my green eyes, but it's not like making them stand out. I think blue eyes would really pop with this. Which honestly, when you think about it, making your eyes pop sounds horrible. It sounds like some sort of medieval torture thing, but you get what I mean. Okay, we are good. Now, all of my flat shaders are horrifically dirty. So we're going to go in with the next best thing. This is the 217 from MAC. It's nice and thin and mostly flat, although it does have a little bit of a fluffier edge than a typical flat shader. Regardless, we're going to go ahead and pick up that shade, which is called Bronze Foil, appropriately enough. And I'm just going to put it on dry and then we'll do um, setting spray on the other eye to see what kind of difference it makes. I'm just going to pat it into place first so that I don't end up knocking all of that shimmer down onto my cheeks and then I can move it around the lid a little bit. There. That is very pretty. I like that. But let's see what happens if we use some setting spray. Oops. Let's put it on this eye. I can feel it falling on my cheeks. You know, sometimes that setting spray makes like a world of difference. It's not making a world of difference here, which frankly I think is a good thing. It means that the shadow stands on its own, but all that to say, actually, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it just stands well on its own. There, that's that's the point I'm trying to make, is that I like this shimmery shadow. Okay, but I am just going to fine tune a little bit, go back in with a bit more of that really deep, sh well, the deepest shade at any rate. It's not super deep. And just really concentrate that into the outer portion of my lid here. Sort of stamp it into place. Okay, there we go with the shadow placement. I'm going to do just a little bit more blending, although I'm not going to be adding any more shadow. For the inner corner, there is really not an option for my skin tone in this palette. So I'm just going to bring out a highlighter. I will put some in the inner corner, put a little bit under the brow bones. I'll do lashes and mascara, not lashes. I'll do mascara and eyeliner off camera, and then I'll come back and we'll wrap this bad boy up. All right, there we go with the completed look. So for the inner corner and the brow bone, I used Champagne Pop from Becca. You can now get it through Smashbox. I just, I really think that it plays nicely because it has that little bit of an orangey, bronzy kind of undertone. So it's not too bright and it just kind of blends all in with everything else. On my lips, I have one of the Natasha Denona glosses. I just about called it glasses. That's not it. Glosses in the shade Cala. And then for eyeliner, I used the Clinique Pretty Easy Liner in brown. And for mascara, I have the Lash Princess from Essence, the one with the aqua coloring on it. So that is the completed look. So let's back it up. I'll give my final thoughts and then we'll say goodbye. Okay, I've got two competing points of view when it comes to final thoughts. So on the one hand, if we just look at how these shadows perform, how they apply, how they blend, all of that kind of thing, I really can't fault them. These apply the way that I expect Natasha Denona palettes to apply. That's not to say that they always do. I think that her minis are becoming more and more consistent as time goes on, but certainly some of the earlier ones that I had, I'm thinking like mini Sunset and mini... 
nude possibly I can't remember which it was one of the really early ones I did not enjoy that very much I found that those powders were quite dry and they just didn't work very nicely workable but with effort this on the other hand blended really nicely layered on top of itself really well I'm not complaining about the performance at all but on the other hand, we've only got five shadows to play with, and I think there's a little bit of a missed opportunity with this palette in that the lightest shade could have been a little bit lighter and the deepest shade could have been a little bit deeper just to give a bit more of a gradient and give a little bit more sort of options on how you can play with it. Make it really deep and dramatic or make it a little bit more of a, not necessarily no makeup makeup, but a lighter makeup day. So I am just a little thrown, I think, by the lightest shade in the palette that shows up so orange and relatively deeply for what it is within the palette. That one just kind of threw me. So I think if that one had been a little bit less intense in terms of the warmth and if it had been a little bit lighter in shade, I think that would have given some more options. I could have used it as an inner corner highlight. I could use it even more effectively for buffing out other shadows. I think that there could have been a bit more versatility built into a five pan palette just from that perspective. So I think it's really gonna come down to you. If you like the color story and especially having seen those two Two first shades that I applied in action and how similar they are, then I don't think that this palette is going to disappoint you. However, if you have a ton of neutrals, which I do, so I really didn't need to buy this palette, but moment of weakness, here we are. If you have a ton of neutrals in your collection, you don't need this palette. You truly don't. And, and in fact, it's not even the kind of palette that I would say like, oh, but if you're going away for a weekend, this is one you can throw in your bag and you've got all your bases covered. I, I don't think so because I don't, at least from my own sense of creativity such as it is, I don't see that you can get a ton of different looks from this because everything sort of hits along the same note. So with all that said, I'm not necessarily disappointed that I bought it. I really do think that this this look is really pretty. Again, I think it's very fall-ish, so I could see myself wearing this very frequently to the office come fall time but I don't think it's a must have. So we'll leave it at that. I'm gonna wrap the video up here. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the palette down below. Did you pick it up? Are you interested in it? Is it just completely off your radar? Let me know. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I ask that you consider doing so. But with all of that said, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I will see you in my next video. And until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.